Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar, Digitizing the Hotel Stay for a Unique Guest Experience. My name is Philip. I am heading up marketing um, here at SweetPad, and I welcome you live from our office here in Berlin, Germany. Yeah, I'll be your host and moderator for today's session, but let me introduce you to the speaker uh, for today, and that is Moritz von Petersdorf Kampen, one of our two co-founders of SweetPad. Um, yeah, he founded our company um, alongside Tillmann Volk back in 2012 in Berlin, um, after heading up a cloud computing startup already. And all that after completing his studies at the prestigious German university, WHU Otto Beisheim School of Management. Um, yeah, before I hand over to you, Moritz, for kicking off the session, here's some more import, important information for the audience. Um, the webinar will take around 45 minutes. So we have planned 30 to 35 minutes for the actual presentation. And then we will have enough time for your questions. So please feel free to post your questions at any time during the webinar. Um, and of course, also at the end during Q&A. Um, to do this, just use your question um, panel, control panel um, at the right side of your screen. Um, yeah, type the question in, uh, send it, and we will have a look later on. We'll also be recording the session, of course, and you will all receive um, the recording um, tomorrow, I guess, um, with a follow-up email. And with that, I'll be back later to chair Q&A. And without further delay, I pass it over to you, Moritz. Enjoy the webinar, everyone. All right. Thank you very much, Philip. I think now we should have it. Great. Um, hopefully, you can now see the camera and my screen at the same time. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the for the warm introduction. Um, happy to be hosting today's webinar and share more about a digital toolbox digitizing the hotel stay for a unique guest experience. Um, Philip already shared a little bit about SweetPad. Uh, let me sum things up super super quickly before we jump right into the topic, but that you get a little bit of background where the data and the information that I'll be sharing with you today is coming from. So we are a Berlin-based software as a service company um, that is solely focused on the hospitality industry. Right now, we're working with a little more than a thousand hotels in more than 40 countries. And um, we have a suite of different products uh, that we're offering to customers, but the three most important ones are our guest engagement solution, either on the phone, so on the guest own device, our in-room tablet, for which our company I think is best known and which is also still our, our core product and most popular product. And then we have a solution um, that enables guests to share content on a hotel screen that you can basically retrofit in every existing hotel TV um, these days. But enough of the advertisement, let's get to uh, the interesting things and let's talk about the digital guest journey, what is happening in this space and how hotels can prepare to be ready to what's up and coming um, in this new world post COVID, uh, with COVID to an extent, um, but uh, what is for sure gonna remain um, is uh, digitization. But let's jump into the topic itself. Now, in order to do that, let's take a step back and think about how our industry has evolved over the last 20 years. So if you were in this space 20 years ago, you probably still remember a time where the pre-stay communication was in various different ways still quite analog. So guests picked up the phone and called and wanted to have a reservation for, I don't know, two days or two weeks from now in order to book your room. These days, this entire process pre-stay got digitized be it through hotel websites or obviously also through OTAs like Booking.com, Kayak or Expedia. And interestingly enough, roughly 10 years ago, the same happened after this day. So while in the past, the written piece of paper that you received from your guests was really the way that you were able to see whether the guest felt comfortable in your property. Today, platforms like TripAdvisor, for instance, are handling a lot of this post-day guest engagement part. So I think it's fair to say that pre-stay communication and post-stay communication got digitized tremendously over the last 20 years. The thing is, though, 
is the same actually the case for during this day? Because if we're honest to ourselves, we still live in a world where guests come into some of the most luxurious hotel rooms of this planet. They look around and what they'll find is a guest directory, a spa brochure, room service information, information on the area, the Bible. So pretty much the same things that they've also seen 20 years ago. Now, obviously with COVID that changed to an extent. So um, I think some of you are probably trying out to put PDFs uh, behind a web link that you can use in order to get additional um, or to provide information to the guests. And obviously there are many more solutions out there. But I think what is important to see here is that this is an area that um, not just hotels try to digitize these days, but the companies that already took part of your business pre-stay and part of your business post-stay are now trying to get into your business also during stay. Let me give you three examples how companies like Booking.com, Expedia, or TripAdvisor are trying to make money from the drinks they experience of your customers as well. First example, Booking.com and OpenTable. I don't know if all of you are aware, but a couple of years back, Booking.com decided to purchase OpenTable for a couple of billions. So Booking.com went from selling just the room to also selling your restaurants. So that also means they went from selling room revenues to selling drinks day revenues. So interestingly enough, it's not just an OTA for your rooms, but also for your F&B services. Another example is Expedia. Expedia is providing quick feedback to your customers. So basically right after check-in, guests will be asked how they rate the checking experience. And instead of the guest approaching you, telling you any issues that the guest might have, Actually, this communication is now going through Expedia and then over to you. So not just post-day feedback, but during stay feedback. And last but not least, TripAdvisor. I guess of everybody in the call today, I would assume at least 50% of you have used TripAdvisor in the last four to six weeks in order to find out where you can go for dinner, where you can go for lunch, what are the attractions in a town that you have not, have not been in before. And I think that is also quite a strong driver of digital during stay guest engagement. And as hotels, we should be clear that it's not just about the solutions that we provide, but that we are always in competition with those ATA, OTAs for the guest attention and obviously for the margins that we can make out of all our services in the long runs. And I think we've all seen what this can lead to in the during stay and the pre-stay experience if a too high share goes into the hands of the OTAs. I think it's important that as hotels we are aware that this trend is happening and that we also talk about what are the solutions that we can deploy. And I feel that this discussion has never been more important than right now because with COVID accelerating the digital transformation and the digital adoption of digital services, we basically find ourselves in a situation where the guests wants digital solutions and the guest needs to make a decision. They can either use the hotel services and use them to communicate well with the hotel, or they'll end up using the OTA services, which will obviously cost hotels more money in the long run. And the question is, and that is the point we'd like to address in the webinar today, how can we provide a landscape of services and solutions that the guest ends up using the hotel services more than they end up using the OTA services? In order to do that, we're gonna look at the guest journey. We're going to look at the pre-arrival phase, the check-in phase, what is happening during the stay, and then last but not least, the checkout phase. And we'll look at different solutions. We'll look at app solutions, we'll look at mobile websites, we'll look at in-room tablets, and we'll look at smart TV solutions. So obviously those are the four main solutions that you could potentially deploy for your customers. And I think it's important that we dive into all of them at the different stages to get a proper understanding of which solution is the right solution at any given point in time of the guest journey. All right, let's jump in. What happens if we want to communicate with our customers before they arrive? They might still be at the airport, they might still be at home, they get ready for their stay, and many of them have topics that they'd like to communicate with you. I can tell you that a smart TV or an in-room tablet are obviously not the best way to engage them because obviously the guest is not at the property yet. So of those four solutions we wanted to talk about, there are basically two solutions that could potentially be used, which is a bring your own device solution, um, which um, in this case would mean a mobile website where the guest can act as hotel information for a specifically designed mobile website that is covering all the information pre-stay. Obviously, many hotels have tried to develop hotel apps, 
So the guests would then, before arrival, download a hotel app and engage with that app um, in order to get all these services and information on the hotel. But let's not forget that it's not just about those things that come to mind and that you can provide actually really, really well. In terms of pre-state communication are still all tools that we shouldn't be forgetting, like email and SMS. And those tools are obviously often used in order to promote a mobile website or in order to promote an app for the guests to download. Um, one problem that you'll be facing here is that for many guests, you obviously don't have um, the email address ready. Um, and uh, that is why I think during state communication is quite important in thinking about how you can use during state communication to capture the guest's email address while they're in your property to make use of that in the long run. But we'll talk more about that in a second. Obviously, the first idea that comes to mind is to say, hey, I want to reach my customers. All of my customers are carrying along their phone. They have various different apps on their phone already. Why don't I develop my own app and provide it to my customers? And then they have it on their phone. They can use it pre-arrival. They can use it during the stay. They can use it after the stay in order to give feedback and book the next day. Great solution. And I think the idea behind it is also spectacular and really, really good. The only problem that hotels are facing with this kind of solution is that usually less than 5% of guests end up downloading hotel apps. There are some hotel apps with a lot of features and functionalities with check-in, door opening, and many other things. The numbers we usually hear from the market is they can go up to 15% of customers that end up using those solutions. So while in theory that solution would be great to use to reach your customer, the problem that most hotels that try to offer apps to their customers are facing is that guests don't want to download it. And I think the reason behind that is clear. Um, ask yourself, how often have you downloaded a hotel app in the past? And then ask yourself the second question, how was it advertised and what's in it for you to download it? And I think if you bring those things together, um, most hoteliers come to the conclusion that an app is not the best way forward simply because just a fraction of customers will end up downloading and hence using it. What works a lot better is a mobile solution that runs in the guest's phone browser. So basically what you can do is you can send the guest a pre-stay message, like an email, and say, hey, dear customer, we're looking forward to welcome you. If you'd like to get initial arrival information or maybe even already pre-order your spa treatments, click on this link here, and then they'll end up on a page like the one that you see on the right-hand side. The big benefit of this system really is that uh, no download is required. They might be already traveling. They don't want to download 100, 200, 300 megabyte of data through data roaming. They can just go on a website and get all the services they're interested in. And when they're done, they're done. They close the phone or they close the web page and um, they don't have anything installed on their own device that is messing up their home screen. Um, so obviously the adoption rate of these solutions is way higher. And I would suggest usually in terms of pre-stay communication, the much better way than an app. Simply what you want to do, pre-stay is often upselling, promote certain services, inform the guest. And in order to do that well, you need to make sure that the guest is actually clicking on the link and enjoying the services and taking a look at that service instead of first downloading an app, maybe even then having in addition to that a sign into the app, which leads to a much lower adoption rate. So pre-stay, I think it's fair to say that the best way to engage the guest is a combination of messaging, be it through email, through SMS, through chat, and a mobile website where you can send the guest in order to provide him more information. But how about check-in? Now we have arrived at the property, we're just walking through the door, we live in a digital world, and in most of the hotels, I'm still checking in manually. I think the manual check-in has got a lot of advantages, but let's look at the digital alternatives and let's try to get some inspiration from other industries. So how are the airlines doing it? The airlines obviously have an app. Um, I think the big advantage of an airline like Lufthansa or British Airways or whichever airline you want to pick is that they are not serving a couple of thousand customers a month or a couple of hundred customers a month if we're talking about a smaller hotel, but they're servicing millions of people. So for them, the investment into an app combination with their loyalty program can make a lot of sense. So they obviously have that to have the guests check in. That being said, I believe they get even more check-ins from their mobile website. So what you get before you check in, for instance, with Lufthansa or any other company is you'll get an email 
which will send you to a website where you can do the mobile check-in. And if that wasn't enough, you go to the airport and at, you, at the airport you'll find something like this, which is a kiosk. So you can just walk up to the kiosk, do your check-in through that, uh, wait your, um, your suitcase and then and over your suitcase at the checking counter and go right to security. So even airlines that have great apps with a good distribution decided that that isn't enough. They need to offer multiple ways for the guest to do that check-in in a property. And that is also what I believe is the best hospitality industry. So services like in this case, Hotelbird, app check-in and then a terminal at the uh, exactly that they have a web check-in and reception within the hotel to give the guest multiple ways to do the check-in in terms of adoption rate i think the terminal in the hotel is still probably the most used ones for most of hotels then comes the web check-in and only then the app comes in terms of adoption um, from from guests what you got to be careful though in this case coming back to the apple that already got bitten into from for the pre-stay phase and post-stay phase is that uh, companies like booking.com for instance are starting to offering check-in apis so to some of those services booking is now saying you can do your check-in through the booking.com app because they are working with different players in the market so that the guest can end up doing their entire check-in process through the booking.com app and then arriving at your property and already being checked in which sounds great in theory for all of your different processes but you've got to be aware that if you want to go down that route, you have a competitor, an OTA, that is further integrating into your value chain. And in the long run, this can cause you with strategic issues when you want to keep on reaching the guests during the stay in a great way. So I'm not saying you should definitely not do it. I think there are great ways, uh, great reasons to do it, because quite frankly, it will allow you to um, streamline your services for all the bookings that come through booking.com but it will also in the long run further increase the bookings that you'll be seeing that are coming in through booking.com. Then if you look into digital ways to do the check-in, all those ideas of how you could do it, what you could potentially do and how to be successful with it are actually not that easy. If you want to do it in a way that is legally 100% conform, um, we are unfortunately, in most of the European countries at least, not yet at a point where you can do this in a nice and easy way. So very often in order to really make sure that you have identified or really identified the guest, you will need to be adding um, a deposit card or a credit card through which the guest can be identified additionally. But that is a problem if you have multiple guests arriving per reservation. That is um, also a problem if uh, the payment of the trip is not happening at the, uh, at the beginning, but at the end, but you already see, want to see the credit card early on um, in a digital communication channel. And obviously you have big data protection uh, requirements for saving uh, the guest's information. So I'm not saying that this is um, impossible and that those things are impossible to be in mind and to work on, but I can tell you that it's definitely more complicated than most people think. And in order to do this in a right way, you've got to make sure that you find a partner that is helping you throughout this process because Right now, um, many of those solutions are on the edge uh, and still operating somewhere in a, in, a, in a gray market. And if you wanna make this happen through, for instance, the electronic ID card, which very, very, very few guests actually have these days, um, then you'll end up having a solution that's barely being used. So very often you are in this combination of three things that could happen. One is you focus on doing the identification through a credit card which has the disadvantages that are shared here on the slide. The second one is that you might end up with a solution based on the electronic ID card, which is these days barely being used. And the third problem that you can run into is that you just deploy a solution that is not 100% legal. And if authorities would be approaching your hotel, asking you for um, certain verifications that a certain guest was there at a certain time, you might be in trouble. So digital check-in sounds great, but it's not ideal and where it should be yet. That in combination with um, a statement of one of our customers who told me that um, digital check-in works, but if you really wanna see it work and have a high adoption of guests using it, you really have to operate a hotel that is running completely staffless at certain hours of day, because most of the guests usually prefer to still approach the reception, do that check-in there before they then go up into their room. 
So it's a complicated matter and you really got to watch closely which kind of solutions you're deploying in order to make this step of the guest journey, journey digital. There are new solutions on the horizon. So in Europe, for instance, there's a program called Digital Identities, uh, which uh, the federal government here in Germany, but also various other um, governments throughout the European Union try to uh, solve this issue that we're facing there. And um, this is, for instance, an example of, of how that happened uh, back in Germany uh, a while ago. About, I think it was an example in, in Motel One, where you basically scan a QR code, then through the digital wallet app, you're then able to, um, to identify yourself. And uh, that is one way forward where basically in an app, you'll be carrying your own identity with you. And then you can always use that when you go to a hotel. The idea here is for the hotel, but also for various other services to make the check-in experience a lot more easily because through that one app, you can always identify yourself everywhere and whenever you want to. So the idea sounds great. And I think this project has great potential. It's not without criticism when it comes to data protection and data security but it's definitely um, a step in the right direction to make this overall process that is either dependent on a credit card or on a digital ID that very few guests have these days or is illegal. I think it's a good way forward to, to try to solve this problem. But the governments aren't the only ones. Actually, Apple announced last year that they are starting in the first uh, American states to uh, basically um, have the driver's license, but also the ID right in the Apple wallet. So you may know the Apple wallet from when you bought it at plane, you can store certain tickets in your Apple wallet. Going forward, Apple wants to do the same thing for your identification so that you can then identify at a hotel with your, um, with your phone without the need of downloading an additional app. So, Right now, the existing solutions are still causing a lot of problems, but fortunately, there are two different initiatives there that um, yeah, have different ways of solving them in the long run. And what we want to do next is somewhat of a poll and get your feedback on it. And we were wondering what should be done. So we are a little bit in a who wants to be a millionaire scenario here today. We'll have four different options for you guys to choose from, and Philip will be guiding you through these questions. Great, thank you, Moritz. Yeah, we have prepared a poll and I will just start it right away. Um, so you should be able to see it now. So what should we do now? Four options, please choose. First one, let's trust the government's digital competence. Second one, better bet on Apple and or Google. Third one, just rely on existing solutions, they work. Or the fourth one, I don't care, let's do nothing. So please vote now and we will have a look at the results in a second. They are coming in. And then also Moritz, I will show them to you so that you can interpret a little bit. Some more seconds. All right, then let me share the results. So here you go. And with that, I hand over to you, Moritz. All right, thank you, Philip. Um, that is um, an interesting result. I think the um, first answer that we see here to trust in Apple and Google and their digital competence, I think there's, they have a lot going for them. Um, and I believe that, uh, that this could be a vital option and at least they'd have the digital competence to make this happen. And um, to an extent, as a user, I hope that uh, this would be the case because then it would be seamless from a data protection point of view, but also from a government point of view. I think it's going to be a tough fight for both Apple and Google to do this going forward because the governments, um, for them, it's really this identification game. It's really an infrastructure thing that um, is super, super crucial for them to own in the long run. So I think they're going to fight hard for their own solution. I think at the end of the day, it probably needs to be um, a combination of answer one and answer two, um, and uh, that they find a way to make that happen. Because at the same time, we also, as users, got to be careful that we're not handing out all of our data to, um, to those um, big players in the long run. I think the existing solution we have, uh, they do work. Um, I think they are um, the, the answer that we've seen there is, is a decent one. And I think especially for certain scenarios and certain customers, 
um, check in um, and check out can be can be done through those solutions. That being said, I think once a solution like the Apple Wallet solution will be on the market, I would expect a strong adoption rate from the guest perspective um, on, on those solutions. And I think existing solutions will be um, in trouble. Doing nothing usually is not an option. And I agree with that. I think it was also in terms of wording a bit, a bit leading, but I'm very glad to see that everybody uh, wants to act on the digital challenges ahead. But let's move away from check-in. Let's talk about the key. So the key, um, the way to get into the room is obviously super, super crucial because what is the digital check-in good for if the guest then still needs to go to the reception, get his physical key and go up to the room? And also there, uh, an issue that we've identified earlier is one that is keep on popping up. So having a key in an app is obviously a great idea, but your door room won't open if you don't have an app on your phone. So it works, um, the functionalities are there, but unfortunately in terms of adoption rate, there are still certain limitations around the apps. That being said, there are new initiatives on the horizon and very often with progressive web apps, there are different ways to ensure that keys can be open or doors can be open through a mobile website. Um, obviously, some of the providers of those solutions still have the security concerns around it, but generally speaking, this is something that is happening more and more and also the solutions become more secure. So I think in the long run, this could be a vital path to go down. But that being said, also here, we see that companies like Apple or Google have started to integrate it into their wallet features. And I think this, for instance, if you've ever um, had the opportunity to travel um, in, in a city like London, but they also have it in various other cities. If you've ever used the tube, just through Apple Pay or Google Pay, you just even when the battery of your phone runs out, you have a chance to just hold your phone uh, against the entry. And then when you leave at the exit again, and it's gonna be charged directly, you see how much more seamless this becomes to opening a link or opening an app, selecting your key, saying, yes, I'd like to open it. All those things are not necessary anymore. You can basically just hold your phone against your door. It'll open up. Um, Due to, due to the, um, in that case, it's NFC that Apple and Google are, are using there. And I think the potential of this solution is, is pretty, pretty big in the long run. And I hope it'll solve this issue that we're seeing right now with apps that are not being downloaded, because this very seamless way to just have it through the, um, just have it through the uh, Apple wallet or Google, Google wallet um, will, I think, ensure that also this last step of the journey um, before the guest gets into the room will be digitized going forward. All right, now we know that maybe things aren't ideal these days, but the cavalry is coming and new digital solutions are on the horizon to make sure that the guest is checking in. And after that, he actually or she actually gets into the room. Now let's talk about what happens in the room. Um, and usually guests are looking for three things um, when they are thinking about a during stay experience. One is they wanna be entertained, two, they want to get communication and they want to learn about the property and the services. And number three, more from a hotel perspective, when we are communicating, we obviously want to make sure that our services are being seen, we can upsell and we can also reduce costs at the same time. Now let's look at those three things and look at the different solutions that are out there and how they can handle those three requirements. I think in terms of entertainment, it's pretty clear that these days and also going forward, there's one thing, one solution that is the best entertainer in the room, and that's usually the TV. Unfortunately, what we see right here with uh, what many hotels still call smart TV is what is being offered to many of the customers, while the expectations of some of the customers is closer to a Netflix experience, a YouTube experience. So. TV and entertainment can mean a lot of different things. Um, analog TV, where you just basically watch whatever channel is available to you, is obviously in terms of experience, not as great as a video on demand solution like YouTube or Netflix. The good news here is there are solutions out there with which you can retrofit existing hotel TVs. You basically put a little dongle behind those TVs um, and through that you're then able uh, as a guest to choose a certain movie you want to watch on Netflix or on YouTube and stream it right to the hotel TV. So those solutions like our Sweetcast solutions are, are there and you can use them to retrofit to basically uh, bring up the game of your um, guest entertainment um, in the room 
um, without needing to buy new new television sets. Obviously, the alternative to that is, if you have to do an investment anyways, is to make sure that whenever you go for a new TV these days, that functionalities like YouTube streaming, Netflix streaming from the guest own device are available in them. Um, I think it's important that it happens through the guest own device and that they don't have to sign in through a remote control and type in their Netflix password. Uh, that is not going to happen and guests are not going to enjoy that. But obviously that's not all, um, because the other thing that we said would be important is communication and upselling. And in order to be able to communicate your services and upsell your services to customers, you obviously got to make sure that guests are actually engaging with your solution. And for that, what we did is we compared the time that guests spend on different guest engagement solutions. So apps are roughly being used for one minute per stay. A BYOD solution, so a mobile website, is used for roughly two and a half minutes per stay. Then you have the smart TVs, which are not half bad because smart TVs actually have the great benefit that they have a big screen in the middle of the room and guests uh, play, play around with it. And then last but not least, what we see from our data is what is actually being most used is an in-room tablet. And I think that's quite interesting. Um, and let me talk you through why this is actually happening. One of the reasons is that when you put an in-room tablet in the room, you usually take out everything else from the room. So no more guest directory, no more spa brochure, no more room service information, um, no more remote control, no more phone. Everything sits in this one single device. And when the guest comes in, they're usually quite curious what this device is about. They pick it up and start engaging with it. And the features that I just described, for instance, the smart TV or the, the remote control that you can see here on the left-hand side where the guests can basically pick the channels that they want to uh, watch is in various different cases more than doubling the overall usage. So the guest might only want to turn on the TV and watch sports, but after they had the device in their hand for 30 seconds, there's a pop-up message talking about a promotion in the restaurant or in the spa. And that's really how you can engage uh, customers while they're in, in your property and send them the right way. Same is true for the phone. So I know that many of you have had to make difficult decisions in the last couple of years and deciding if certain investments like into a next telephone system or into a phone in the room is still necessary in a world where very few guests are actually using the phone and phones are not a revenue center for hotels anymore. This is something that you could also integrate in an in-room tablet. So you can basically do internal calls within the property, but also external calls. And you can save the money for the phone system. You can save the money for the phone in the rooms. And more importantly, even also the, for new builds, the, uh, the cables that you'd usually bring into the room and then have a unified experience on the single device. And then we talked about what you do with that if you have this guest attention on that solution. And one way to basically use that guest uh, attention is also to bring forward your sustainability initiatives. What right now more than 50% of our customers are doing is they ask guests if they are willing to waive their daily housekeeping and have their room cleaned only every other day. Um, depending on the country you are in, often the savings for every housekeeping that's being skipped is somewhere between eight to 20 euros. And whenever that happens, um, then guests basically, uh, you as a hotelier basically end up having um, the entire digitization solution that you purchase being financed through guests saying, yes, I would like to waive my daily housekeeping and would only like to have it cleaned every other day. And obviously same is true for upselling. So when you reach your guests, when they spend 15 minutes on your digital engagement solution, um, you can do things like sending push notifications to your customers and say, hey, tonight we still have a spa treatment available that you can book right here. We still have a table available at our restaurant. Tomorrow we still have a late checkout that you can pick. And that is just a great way to upsell your services to the guests that are already in your property. So to look at the drink stay experience, I believe the best entertainer in a hotel room is still the TV. But in terms of communication and increased sales and saving costs, you need the solution that reaches the guest best during the stay. And based on our data, that is by far, by a factor of 10 compared to many solutions, the in-room tablet. Now let's check out, let's say that was it. We had a great stay, we arrived, pre-arrival, we communicated a check-in, we had a digital solution, we had a great stay with digital solutions. Now let's get out of here and let's pay. What we see throughout all different channels a bring your own device solution, an app solution, even the in-room tablet that's being used quite well, and the smart TV solution even more so, the adoption rate of digital checkout is not as high as um, one would think. The highest numbers that we've heard based on different solutions is around 20%. 
obviously um, that is uh, something that many players in the market are still working on in order to streamline the work for the receptionist and not having um, very long lines on Sunday mornings, for instance, before guests of a leisure hotel are checking out on the same day. So digital checkout, there are different solutions out there. I haven't come across one that really was able to reach 50, 60, 70, 80% of customers and uh, hence streamlining this entire experience for, uh, for various customers. But we've already come a long way in different other areas of the guest journey. And I'm quite sure that in the long run, there'll be solutions out there that are able to reach a very high share of customers and have them check out digitally as well. Now, I think the most important thing to, to take away from this entire presentation is to walk in your own guest shoes. Think about not just what would be great for you to have, where you feel, hey, maybe an app would be nice because then I can bring all the information in there. The guest can use a pre-stay, during stay, and after the stay, which in theory sounds good, but you know how it is. The solution not just has to work for you as a hotelier, but first and foremost, the solution needs to work for your guests. So work, walk in your own guest shoes and think about what kind of solutions would you actually be using if you'd be your own guest in your property. And then based on that, if you have that as the first thought in your mind when looking at other alternatives or other solutions to look at, um, usually you'll end up with solutions that see a higher adoption rate and the higher the adoption rate of your solution, um, the higher the likelihood that the answer to this question that we posed at the very beginning, if you'll be using the OTA solution or the solution that is provided by the hotel, is way more likely to be answered in your favor. Because if you have the guest in mind from the very beginning and think about the guest and what your guests want instead of what would be nice or good or financially beneficial for you, then you'll end up providing a solution that will see way higher adoption and that will help you to make sure that after OTAs have already been able to take away business from you pre-stay and took away business from you post-stay, that you can be in charge, be in control of the remainder of your business and revenues that you currently don't have to pay any commission on. And you as a hotelier, together with companies like Sweetpad, should be fighting for keeping those revenues commission free and ensuring that guests are communicating with you directly and not through intermediaries, also in the long run on your own digital channels. That's it from my end. Thank you very much. I hope we have time for one or two questions, but um, yeah, Philip, I guess over to you. Cool, thanks Moritz. Yes, we definitely have time for one, two already uh, received some in the chat. So let me try to sort that a little bit. Um, maybe starting with this one here. Um, please explain the difference again between BYOD hotel app and mobile website for pre-stay. Yeah, so um, I mean, quite frankly, the um, wording is probably not 100% uh, correct that I used during the course of the presentation. I was mainly referring to, so it's, it's very good that this question comes up. I was mainly referring to two different products, that is um, the mobile website um, and the app. And at the end of the day, you could actually group both of them under the word BYOD. BYOD stands for bring your own device. So basically the guest own device. And then based on the guest own device, you could choose uh, two different ways um, to, um, to go along. One would be a mobile website, which is, um, what I talked about, a solution that sees a higher adoption compared to, to an app. And then obviously there is uh, the app that we all know when we use, I don't know, um, our email client on our phone or when we use WhatsApp, that's usually powered by, by an app. Um, the big um, advantage of the, um, bring your own, uh, of the mobile website um, is that um, the adoption rate is higher. The big disadvantage is that there are certain things that you cannot do in a mobile website on a proper way. So for instance, push messages, although some, supp uh, some suppliers claim that you can send push notifications, that is more a theoretical construct and it really doesn't work really well to, to upsell services. Um, many hotels try to put it on the start page of their Wi-Fi, but they see that guest engagement is there. They look at it, but then they bounce away. So also with regards to the mobile website, um, we see many different problems in terms of guest engagement.